Hello there, welcome back to Nine Little Aussies. I'm Chrissy, and I'm in my kitchen today. It has been a while since I have picked up the camera. I've done a few garden things um, that I have shared, but it's been a bit less than I was doing. Um, I've had a lot going on, but also, honestly, I've been in a little bit of a funk and felt like, well, I'm just not doing anything that I feel is worthy of your time. <laughs> So I thought, well, I'm just going to pick the camera up today and share with you what I'm doing. And sometimes I'm not doing super homesteady type things. Sometimes I am, and it's usually woven into the day, but it's in little snippets here and there. It's like not all day long. So it is in the afternoon right now. School is done for the day. The children are mostly outside playing or doing chores. And I am about to put on a banana cake for afternoon tea. This is my granny's recipe um, that I, I have at different times tried different recipes and I always keep coming back to granny's cake recipe because I try different recipes that have less sugar or use an alternative sweetener, but my family loves this one the most. So I have some bananas that are going a little bit um, past their prime so I'm gonna do a banana cake and I probably will share some frustration that I've had in the garden and um, I'm going to make a tincture as well so I will bring you along for the ride so this isn't a really there's nothing revolutionary in today's video and I guess it's going to be more of a vlog style. I hope it is of value to you and that you might pick up a snippet here. Maybe you'll like granny's recipe. Um, the tincture I'm going to make came out of um, the sort of drama we had a month or so ago with my daughter and respiratory issues in the middle of the night and I used a tincture that I got a hold of then. I actually did a video about that and making some respiratory tinctures. But the lady who I bought that respiratory tincture from told me that um, because I it was it was kind of a difficult thing communicating with her and we we're texting back and forth and she was in the in meetings and I was um, in and out and trying to get a hold of her and she said to me afterwards if she'd have realised the full story when I asked for the tincture she would have maybe suggested this one and it's a pineapple tincture and you use the core of the pineapple and it's not one that you would use all the time I don't actually know if it has a name but it is used for acute conditions so when you're in a bit of a an emergency a bit of a state where and I'm not talking severe emergency where you need to go to the hospital I'm not suggesting that but if it's like it was for my daughter the other day where I really didn't feel I quite needed to go to the hospital but I knew I needed to do something and so this might have been really good in that case apparently it's not something you take long term but just for a day or two at a time so I am going to make some of that today but first let's get this cake in the oven I've got some bananas that are getting all freckly and my mixing bowl um the recipe is here so it's just granny's banana cake and there's a couple of grannies so i've got her name on there um now it's the other thing i really like about this recipe is it's a one bowl wonder you just throw it all in the bowl mix it all up and put it in the oven which is my kind of baking <laughs> okay i've got some bread rising here um, and this is just flour. Look at this awesome, it's like a big glass jar with a lid. It doesn't have a seal on it, but my husband found it for me. I think he just got it at Walmart, but it had a Made in America sticker on it. And it's really good and big and it fits a whole um, bag of, I think it's a five pound bag of flour. So I like to store all of my as much as I can, all of my um, bulk items in glass, which I know has its risks, but I do prefer it to plastic. Mind you, I still use, like I've got this Rubbermaid that I have my sugar in, but 
I'm slowly trying to wherever I can. They're hard to find. They're hard to find good ones with, um, with lids. And of course, there are some things. The other reason I use this for the, um, and I also have what oats in a, in a rubber plastic one, a rubber made one, because the children use it, they get it in and out all the time. And like, I'd be a bit worried about them that, you know, they, they're almost at the age where they can handle that, but still, so I still have some littles. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use just three of these bananas and I'm just gonna toss them in to the bowl. And I usually just mash them with a fork. compost or give these peels to the chooks. All right, I'm going to mash them down. I'm also preheating preheating the oven. Um, it requires a moderate oven, which is 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius. So just give these a bit of a mash. See that's just all mashed up and I do find that the riper the bananas the better the cake and these are only just like you could still eat that well depending on your preference I would still eat that um, a lot of my kids would not <laughs> but the, if it is a bit riper even than this um, it's a lot easier to mash and it does make um, the, there's more sugars being released in the fruit and it makes a sweeter cake if it's a more ripe banana all right, this is a half cup measure. And I typically, I'm gonna do a little bit less sugar. So it's probably three quarters of a cup. And one little eggy waggle. The hens have, our hens have gone a little off the lay again, which is a pain. I'm not getting as many eggs as we were. We were selling eggs, well the boys were. The boys were selling eggs, but the chooks have kind of gone off the lay a bit. So now we only have just barely enough for our family. Um, so yeah, it hasn't got cold yet, so I'm not sure why. This calls for one and a half cups of flour, but I'm gonna do a little bit more because I did less on the sugar. And, and a wee bit more. is baking powder so one teaspoon of this and one of bicarb soda or baking soda as it is known here And about two tablespoons of milk. Look, Highland milk. I thought that was funny because that's my maiden name. <laughs> Spelt slightly different, but it's still, every time we drive past it, we have a giggle. I cannot wait to get a cow, guys, and get some real milk into my kiddos. mix honestly a fork does the trick for the whole thing and then you're not dirtying more utensils and it just makes a thick batter I ended up changing to the spatula with the rubber bottom because there was little bits of flour not mixing in on the very bottom with the fork, but the spatula is getting that pretty good. So you can see it's just, there's a few little lumps of banana, but other than that, it's all mixed in a thick kind of globby batter. Yeah, I've got my um, little pan. And I'm going to just a little bread pan, but I have made this in a round cake pan. I've made it in a glass Pyrex dish. Um, 
you could do it in a lamington tray and make like which is a kind of a thin um a rectangular tray uh, when i say thin like uh it's got an edge on it but it's not so it's it's higher than a um a baking what am i trying to say it's higher than a cookie sheet but it's not as high as a cake pan it's like a, for baking lamingtons in i don't know what the equivalent is called here but it's like maybe stands that high like an maybe an inch or an inch high on the edge i don't know anyway i'm loving to try or so what i'm saying is it doesn't really matter what you cook it in it does help if it is um like i like using these um, stoneware because it's harder to burn honestly like you can just um, it's less likely to burn in a pan like this but you can use whatever you've got I'm gonna put some parchment paper or baking paper in the bottom that is an optional extra step you don't have to do that it's just a bit of extra insurance against it sticking and then I'm just gonna pour it in There it is. I'm just gonna pop it in the oven and the recipe says 35 to 45 minutes, just checked. Um, but honestly, it really, I find a lot of times it depends on your oven. And I am finding that in this oven, in this house, it often takes a lot longer than what a recipe says. So we'll see how we go. <sighs> I've set a timer for 40 minutes, kind of halfway in between the recommended time, and we'll check it and see. Okay, so while that is in the oven, I'm gonna cut up this pineapple and get it in the quart jar. And my children love pineapple. Queensland, which is the state in Australia we come from, is known for its pineapples and we would enjoy them every summer so they will be happy to have this for afternoon tea now i only need the core for this little recipe so i'm going to cut off all the outside bits usually we would eat the core um, but not this time I guess that's what we need and that's definitely not going to fill a quart maybe I'll use a pint jar okay so I'm just going to cut up these outside pieces for the children I'm going to cut up this core. I'm just going to chop it. Okay, so it's not even like a just a bit over half full in this pint jar. Um, but that's okay, I'll just top it up. So I'm gonna put vodka just to cover it and then let it sit. It sits for a fair while, like I think eight weeks. I'll check the message, but I think it was eight weeks. So I'm going to stick that in a dark cupboard um, and kind of zhuzh it around every now and then. Now, just to, to be clear, 
I am not a medical professional. I am not saying you should do any of this. I'm just sharing you, with you what I'm learning and what I'm doing. So I am making this little tincture. It's gonna sit on the shelf for eight weeks. If you have any kind of medical condition and you are looking for answers, I'm not your guy. <laughs> Go seek medical attention or find yourself a qualified herbalist or naturopath or whatever the case may be. I'm just sharing with you how I'm learning little bits and pieces and I'm gonna try this and see how we go. I'll keep you posted. Also, you may have seen in the background here this little oh, orange bottle. I do not take pills, but I am saving my mother-in-law's um, empty pill containers and putting seeds in them. This one has uh, holy basil in here. So I'm gonna save those seeds. She suggested it to me. She's like, I've got all these bottles and I'm throwing them out. Do you want them? And I thought, well, maybe for seeds because they're airtight and so I'm gonna try that. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> I don't know, but that's what I'm using to put my little seeds in. And this does have a name. Um, I couldn't remember, but it's bromelain. So I will um, put a label on this so I know what it is. Oh, it's hard to write because the bottle's got <laughs> lumpy bits. Bromelain. B-R-O-M-E-L-A-I-N. Bromelain. Okay, I've just got it out of the oven. It's all goldeny brown. And I did have to give it an extra 15 minutes. It wasn't quite done at the 40 minute mark. But now it is um, good and done. And I put a skewer in and it came out nice and clean. So I will let that sit there and cool for about five minutes before I tip it out and cut it up. Okay, the moment of truth. I have made this cake plenty of times and underdone it in the middle. So hopefully I have not done that. <laughs> this time. Oops, that she comes. Flipping back over. Actually, I should probably take that paper off. I can do so without damaging the cake. So yummy and goldeny. I can't wait to cut open, cut it open and see. Let's see. Mm. Oh, that does look good. Okay, so yummy. Now I do think I might be slightly overdone. I probably should have checked it at the five or 10 minute mark instead of doing 15, but it looked like it needed that. Yummy hot banana bread. All right, Gracie, you want to try it? It might be hot, so take care. Maybe blow on it. Is it hot? And the verdict? <laughs> I am out in my garden now. And I said earlier I was going to show you a frustration that I have had. And honestly, I was so annoyed about this that I just didn't even come out in the garden. I, I saw it and I was like, oh, and just, <laughs> I was just like, oh, think about that later. Because... These chickens, despite my valiant efforts, or what I think is a valiant effort, to raise the fence here, they got back in here. And I had sowed a bunch of seed, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but they have scratched and dug and scratched and dug all the way along here. Scratched and dug. I dare say 
Oh, a couple of my zucchinis have come up. Okay, I just, the other day when I was out here, they hadn't come up, but there's a little zucchini. Huh. So there is a small mercy. They didn't get every seed, but they scratched and dug. And at first, so they came into this area back here and we were out when it happened. So usually if they get in here, maybe one will get in, but then we'll quick, pretty quickly see and get them out. But we were away, we were out and a whole bunch of them got in. And I don't even know why, because we had let them out and into the pasture. So they were in that side paddock full of lush green grass. It's quite a decent size, big paddock. It goes all the way to the front. And they had, they had everything they could want. And yet they decided to come for my garden. So they dug up back there where I planted the potatoes. Really the only thing they didn't get was my raised beds. So they've dug and scratched all through here again where I have these spaghetti squash trying. <laughs> They're trying to survive. My spaghetti squash are trying to survive. Um, I planted all, I had planted seeds all through here in amongst the weeds, but they scratched and dug, scratched and dug all through here. Like, just scratched it to blazes all through here. All along here, I had planted potatoes. Look, they've dug up the potato, pecked it to pieces. Now, they didn't dig up all the potatoes, but I was just so frustrated. All through here, they've dug. I had planted seeds all through here. So now it's just going to be a matter of water and wait and see. How many seeds did they eat and how many survived? We'll see. But I just couldn't even look at the garden for a while. I was so frustrated. So my chicken dramas continue. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, like, I just don't even know why they came in. It was so frustrating. But you know, that's life with animals. Hey, they're always going to get where you don't want them. And they're always going to cause problems that have to be solved. So that's okay. I've had a day to blow off steam. <laughs> And I need to come back out now. And some of them, look, I'm just, even now, as I'm out here with you filming this, I'm seeing, oh, okay, a few seeds have sprouted. So I've, some of my peas have come up here. You can see all the scratchings. Um, and they've eaten some of them, but there's some have come up anyway. So we'll see, maybe it'll be okay. Maybe it'll be okay. I'll have to come out and give it my full attention. You can probably hear the ride on sacks over there mowing and burning off. It's always busy. Bit of a fire over there. Burning off some rubbish. I will share one more little beautiful thing with you before I let you go. Look at these <laughs> beautiful volunteer zinnias. Aren't they gorgeous? They have come up in the walkway so the walkway let me see show you so we've got the bed here and this here is supposed to be a walkway and then this is where I'm going to put a new bed so the zinnias have come up in the walkway just randomly self-sown but they are are rather beautiful I'm so glad I left them. I nearly pulled them out. They were about this big and I was like, do I pull them out? I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let them go. The garden's gone crazy anyway. I'm just gonna let them go. And there they have rewarded me <laughs> with beautiful pops of color. All right, friends. Well, thanks for hanging out with me on just a really normal kind of a day. Nothing particularly special going on, but I appreciate you being here and I hope you try my granny's banana cake. Let me know if you do and if you like it. We love it around here. It is very yummy. Not really what I would call a healthy cake because of the content with the sugar, but I make myself feel better by using organic sugar. 
<laughs> and sometimes I try and sub out honey and it still is lovely but it's worth it every once in a while. Sunshine and raindrops to you wherever you are. I hope you're having a blessed day.